Welcome to Declassify Malaysia. In chapter 22, we will discuss about the big Sarawak sellout. On May 9, 2020, it has been a raging fire across social media regarding the big Sarawak sellout. The sellout of Sarawak properties over oil and gas, and most importantly, our territorial waters. The headliner of the issue is that Petronas to pay Sarawak 2 billion sales tax for 2019 with resolution reach on a future arrangement. The resolution reach between Sarawak and Petronas on the issue of petroleum state sales tax is not actually a breakthrough in terms of gaining state constitutional rights. Even worse, the civil suit brought by Sarawak state government have all end up with nothing. We look at ownership. The bond of contention is on Petronas claiming ownership to the wall of oil and gas in Malaysia and it has regulatory power over any oil and gas activities. This is the main issue. Did Petronas has ownership over Sarawak Continental Chef and whatever oil and gas reserve contain therewith? Sarawak territories was extended by Her Majesty the Queen to include the Continental Chef in 1954. The Continental Chef, according to United Nations Convention Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, defined Continental Chef to extend 350 miles from the baseline. This is according to Article 76. Clause 6 of UNCLOS. Under Sarawak State Constitution, the Continental Chef, owned by Sarawak, was clearly defined to be within the territory of the state. Territory of the state means all areas within the boundaries of the state which comprise the territory of Sarawak immediately before Malaysia Day and includes by virtue of Sarawak Alteration of Boundaries Order in Council 1954. The continental self being the seabed and its subsoil which lies beneath the high sea contiguous to the territorial waters of Sarawak. So what is territorial waters? Territorial waters mean such part of the sea adjacent to the coast of Sarawak as is deemed by international law to constitute the territory water, territorial waters of Sarawak. So the international law, UNCLOS, Article 76.6 said the outer limit of the continental surf shall not exceed 350 nautical miles from the baseline from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured. So this is the measure, the extent of Sarawak territorial waters. Now we look at the principle of Utis Posidetis Iris, which means that the frontiers inherited from colonial times are deemed not to be subject to alteration. Based on this principle, it means Putrajaya cannot take over, cannot amend, or cannot repeal the order in council made by the Queen in 1954, which defined the extent of Sarawak territorial waters up to 350 miles from the baseline. In, in addition to this, Sarawak also lay claim to the ownership of the continental surf 
by virtue of Article 47, Clause 2 of Sarawak Constitution. In the articles, the provision was given. Any land in the state which immediately before the commencement of this constitution was vested in Her Majesty shall be on the commencement of this constitution vested in the state. The above article in Sarawak constitution is very clear. It did not vest any land to the Federation of Malaya or it did not vest it to the Federation of Malaysia. The land is vest to the state, meaning vest to Sarawak. This also means the owner of this land, including territorial waters, is the state of Sarawak. State of emergency was lifted on 24th November 2011. The state of emergency was lifted. Therefore, the enforcement of the following laws in Sabah and Sarawak become void, null and void. This three law is number one, emergency at accession powers ordinance number seven, 1969. It's null and void. The Continental Chef Act, 1966. Null and void. The Petroleum Mining Act 1966. It is null and void. It is not enforceable in Sarawak. This means the Continental Chef and all its oil and gas reserve automatically goes back to Sarawak after the state of emergency was lifted. lifted. Because all the above laws no longer enforceable in Sarawak. Territorial CX 2012 TSA or Act 750 also not enforceable in Sarawak because the core issue of TSA is that both the Continental Chef Act 1966 and the Petroleum Mining Act 1966 is no longer enforceable in Sarawak. Petronas can no longer claim ownership of Sarawak Continental Chef because by May 2012, six months after the state of emergency was lifted, the federal government no longer the owner of the Continental Chef in Sarawak. The ownership automatically goes back to Sarawak once the state of emergency was lifted. Now we look at PDA 74. PDA 74 actually it was invalid. It is unconstitutional. The central government to parliament has no power to take away any land which rightfully belongs to Sarawak by any action whatsoever or by act of parliament, especially to section 2 clause 1 of the PDA, of the PDA which say ownership pandai ownership dia. the entire ownership in and exclusive rights powers liberties and privilege of exploring exploiting winning and obtaining petroleum whether onshore or offshore of Malaysia shall be vested in a corporation section 2 of the PDA will only be executed executed by a vesting order given in section 2 clause 2 this sell out happen even talk the public already know that constitutionally PDA 74 is invalid and not enforceable in Sarawak territorial waters and by virtue of this invalid PDA 74 Petronas was created to plunder our wealth in Sarawak territorial waters we have discussed previously that after state of emergency was lifted in 2012 which took effect on May 2012 the entire ownership of the continental chef has reverted back to Sarawak 
under the legal maxim Utis Posidetis Iris, the continental chef belonged to Sarawak since colonial time. Under Sarawak state constitution and under international law, UNCLOS, the continental chef belong to Sarawak. It is Sarawak properties. It is not chief minister properties. It is not minister properties. It is Sarawak properties. In addi addition, under Article 112C, Clause 4B of Federal Constitution, Parliament cannot pass laws that can deny Sabah and Sarawak from being paid royalties. We look at Article 112C, Clause 4B, which read as follow. Subject to Clause 5 of Article 112D in relation to the state of Sabah or Sarawak, Clause 3B of Article 110, shall not authorize Parliament to prohibit the levying of royalties on any mineral by the state or to restrict the royalties that may be so levied in any case so that the state is not entitled to receive a royalty amounting to 10% at valorem. Section 4 of PDA 74 clearly contravene Article 112C Clause 4B of Federal Constitution because Section 4 of PDA 74 deny Sarawak from levying royalties and it was being replaced by a mere cash payment. Now we look at the at section 4 of PDA 74. It said that cash payment by the corporation in return for the ownership in return for the ownership and the rights, powers, liberties and privilege vested in it by virtue of this act, which is PDA 74, the corporation, Petronas, shall make to the government of the federation and the government of any relevant state such case payment as may be agreed between the parties concerned. As you can see, PDA said, you will be paid cash payment. You will not be paid royalties. Cash payment is not royalty. Get it? Cash payment is not royalty. Therefore, PDA 74 was in contravene of the federal constitution because it was inconsistent with Article 112C, Clause 4B of federal constitution. PDA 74 denies Sarawak from being paid royalty. This is unconstitutional. Besides, there is nothing in the constitution which stated that Petronas or even Putrajaya have full authority to regulate oil and gas development in, in Malaysia. There is nothing in the constitution that tells Petronas have this power or Putrajaya have this kind of power to regulate oil and gas. So, why did Sarawak government come to a conclusion with Petronas as follow? Namun begitu. Kesemua surat cara dan perjanjian yang telah dipersetujui antara Kerajaan Negeri Sarawak dengan Petronas di bawah Akta Kemajuan Petroleum PDA 74 masih sah dan berkuat kuasa. Begitu juga Petronas masih diiktiraf sebagai syarikat minyak negara yang mempunyai kuasa penuh dalam mengawal selia seluruh pembangunan minyak dan gas di negara ini. Selaras dengan Perlembagaan Persekutuan. Huh. But... Where exactly in the constitution express that Petronas have the full authority to regulate oil and gas development in Malaysia? There is none. So, why did Sarawak state government continue to re recognize this invalid PDA 74? The validity of which is in question from the constitutional standpoint. The statement also emphasized the validity of Petronas and PDA 74 to legitimize the possession of oil and gas in Sarawak. The re this resolution was in fact 
allow Petronas to load over Sarawak oil and gas resources. So what 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 the function of Petros? Nothing. White elephant. This is so short sighted. The fact is that Petronas and Putrajaya they fear that if we press the legal action further, it will be proven that PDL 74 is indeed invalid and not enforceable in Sabah in Sarawak. Which also means Petronas Agreement 1975 also invalid. The question we should ask after this why should the Sarawak government give away its right over oil and gas again? Why? It's up for you to answer. Thank you for watching.